What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Everton Football Manager 2022 Rebuilding Series. Leave a big thumbs up if you've been enjoying it and we're going to be giving you an update of the pre-season for Season 3. It was a real big one. A lot of transfer action so don't be surprised if a lot of, especially the first half of this video, uh, is going to be a lot a lot of information so let's get right into it but also to set context as well we did get some money in there from the board 58 million uh, or the budgets for the season and it was reflected by our balance our balance was about 70 million you know how we we're really struggling with money but new season the turnaround with the turnaround you get you're healthy you're, we're like oh yeah we got a lot of money to spend now not just the transfer budget but yeah the balance you know I've talked about that a bit and then you spend your money kind of like how we have and yeah it lowers a bit but of course we're still on the back end of last season and there's both yeah players sometimes I, I get yeah deals done really really early so they're in um, yeah they're in the, the the late part of the previous season so we'll just go through those uh, we won't talk much about this guy as he wasn't really a first team player uh, so there's the types that just try and get something for them. Like just, it, it, it all helps at the end of the day. If it's number one, we're not using him, and number two hasn't got the potential to be good, I'm like, you're out of here, and we're going to cash in as much as we can. And then Sean Longstaff, I was happy just getting over 10 million for him there. Don't forget, we got him as a free transfer. <laughs> then he went over to South Korea, but uh, he, I, I'm, we actually got a decent amount of games out of him, uh, really, so... He was a good signing, um, a good deal both ways. We got him on a free, and we utilized him, but not a superstar, but uh, part of the rotations and all that uh, for the squad management. We got a good deal for signing for free, and then, uh, after the fact, as the season was done, get about 10 mil. And you go into the window, you go into the off-season, there's some players you don't intend to sell, then you get transfer offers, maybe a couple here. Mason Holgate, always seen him as a youngster, he's 26 now. He's got no improvement left. Well, three start and he's two and a half. You're not going to see much growth in him. And I thought, he's not going to turn in. It's always that logic right now. Who's going to be part of the success? Mason? I don't... And most of the time, well, something to gauge is Brighton. 17 and a half million. Targets that are... Like, players that are targets for a club like Brighton that almost, it confirms my, um, you know, decision. Like, okay, Brighton's probably not going to be heading up there. But that's not the sole reason, of course, because sometimes, yeah, it's just not going to seem right. Uh, those clubs can still sign good players, but it's a case-by-case -case situation where you, f where you make your decisions. There's always more than one decision you're selling a player or buying a player. So, yeah, there's that. Demarai Gray, like, he's very similar and it's mixed with how much money you can get for the player as i just said there's multiple reasons he's in the same boat 27 years old not getting better he's as he is at this age for me you've got to be a four star plus player that's what that's the kind of criteria we're setting for the most part there might be some ex exceptions again it depends you you see he's a quick player but for me too many weaknesses and this is where failures uh, could be in games. What I'm tar targeting here, a few mentals. Composure of a 10, concentration of 10. Those three there, I know there's two highlighted, but it's for his position. But for me, those three are so crucial in FM, in the Premier League, for top divisions. Those kind of things let you down. Mental attributes are huge. And outside of his dribbling, he doesn't have another tech, or he only has one other technical uh, that's 12 or, high, or, or higher than 12. That's what we wanted to say. Yeah, 13, and the rest are 12 or below. So, yeah, it's it, questions to be asked for keeping him. And yeah, to get if you get 20 mil for someone like him, uh, that's yeah pretty good money that's put into out. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about players we signed. So Michaelenko, uh, he was good that he was brought in by Everton, uh, but once more he's 24. Like you could say, oh maybe not the best decision. I think because there were so many <laughs> so many deals we conducted, he would have been mad if we rejected the offer. And I'm like, okay, give me the money. We'll spend the money elsewhere and. For the position we're in as well, you know, and of course, this is how we got some money, and it wasn't just for board, uh, the board putting money into the club, uh, but some of our sales. He he's good, but again, when your technicals are that bunch of twelves and then a couple thirteens, 
that is not for me. That's not spending thirty million plus on a player, even though he's got some impressive mentals, his work rate and determination. But that's the thing. That's his focus of his game, and he's pretty quick as well. If you say 15 pace, 15 acceleration. So he's quick and he works hard. I just think we have uh, we can use that money a bit more, <laughs> which is being smart with the money. And as I said, he could have been unhappy if yeah we didn't uh, at least let him talk with Leeds. And then as you can see by the dates, the last one uh, for this upcoming season was Ducure, 10 million to Norwich. This was a different situation. He's 30. These type of players you keep for another season or two, you don't say even his natural fitness. He's a guy I could reason with keeping in other situations uh, because I could say, oh, he'll hold on to his ability. But again, is he a star player? I think he's not bad. I really like his attributes and he's probably good for a team like Everton. But that's the thing doing a rebuild, we don't want to be a team like Everton. <laughs> we want to be an improving, to stepping up and challenging for top four. And yeah, we've got to set up, set up the team to win the league. That's part of the rebuild. I feel like there's that, and then there's the challenge of actually Champions League. That's another step up. But yeah, uh, Ducure, take some money for him. And don't forget, a lot of guys we had, they had very strong wages. So obviously, I'm not going to re remember every single one to the, <laughs> to the specific number. But yeah, uh, we definitely saw that. I think Ducure was on a bit, but because I like to keep it structured, we'll go back to the ins, because we're still talking about the outs. So we go here, you know, when there's a whole list and you can't see them all because I'm here, um, or at least the fee. Yeah, there's a lot going on. So we're going to more so, okay, some of the frees are important. You knew about Mina, Townsend, Coleman. So, yep, Kian, would you believe? You know it's in the game for it to finally go through a couple seasons in. Apparently, the fans got mad at me. That's something I had nothing to do with. I could go down the road of Sports Interactive, please fix that, but the players should have got mad before it even happened, which means it shouldn't even be in this game. But yeah, what can you do? And I know it's probably not as specific as that, but can't you just put in the code, don't get mad at manager in FM22 because he didn't make this decision. <laughs> it was already agreed before. But yeah. You don't see why that should be a thing. He'll be mad at a manager uh, that who's managing Everton because you have no control in that. It's something scripted in the game that's gone through. So yeah, we're going to sort by fee and we'll go down by one so it's players we were in control of. Like we've just been talking about. Alex Iwobi. Uh, again, we can... T t no, I'm going to sort by the date so you guys are not confused. I'm going to do it the kind of the most recent ones. Eric Shurinov, I don't even want to talk about this guy. Like, apparently I broke a promise to him. I can't even remember what it was, but he's been in the reserve, so it's it wasn't too high. But yeah, he was going AWOL and like, uh, he, just had to, he was just causing trouble when, mate, you weren't even that big. I was like, maybe he could be a striker in the future, but for me, his potential, he wasn't going to be better than, we say his potential is higher than Larin, but Larin's already established and... At this time, you always you prefer that guy who is he's shown his quality. Uh, Laren wanted a new contract as well. He's someone because we signed on a free last season. We thought he was value about thirty million. I offered him out. We were getting offers like fifteen million and then like ten million up front, and then just not yeah not his value. So we didn't accept that. We're getting offers like half of what his value was basically. So in in the end, we just offered him a new deal. He could have gone, though. But when you do look at it like this, you just say it's a win. Uh, he's not... If he had higher potential, if he was five-star, four-star, solid, but that's a good, quick uh, little profit. So keep in mind the profits we're making and, yeah, how our finances will be sitting at the same time. So then Alex Iwobi, just so you can see where they line up, and we'll talk about who we brought in anyway, but Alex Iwobi, Lil, uh, 21.5, another one. We, you look deep into their attributes. He's not a bad player, but what did he do for us? He wasn't exceptional, and you can see that through his attributes anyway. For me, getting 20 mil, like, he's not, he's that kind of high transfer value just signed, that's why. Uh, but he, pace 11, I know his acceleration is higher, I almost don't even want to talk about him too much just because I think pretty obvious. And he was one guy, his wage, he was over 100k for sure. I think it was like 120. And a new contract for him, he was wanting a lot more. So definitely well, at least over 100k. He basically is not qu quick enough and not clinical enough in front of goal. The mix of 12 finishing and 12 composure, you just see him wasting too many chances. And again, 
at that level doesn't he's not at the level he should be for that age and compared to other players who we have in the team. So it's a simple one and who the kind of the replacement would be slash someone we got a bit cheaper. Uh, Iverson here, not he was just released on the free, just one of those like reserve players. Anyone, we're just not going to show them because yeah, just we've got too many to go through and they're not relevant players. I'm Arvakandi, sent out on loan, so he eventually joined and he's actually started pretty well. That one assist and player of the match he got on his first game in League One, so it's going to be really good for him. There's a few of those guys we loaned out uh, that with a bit of potential, so I'm really excited about this like prospect with Everton. Like I like that it has a long like a long term aspect, a longer term aspect than my past rebuilds. Uh, because we're really going to see more development, which is exciting. Lewis Dobbin, um, just on loan there. Uh, Kevin Rodriguez, you know about him, that left back from last season, four million. Ruben Rhodes, out on low. We'll, we'll save him for when we go to the signings. Nathan Patterson, four point one. He just to remind you of him. He was actually a new signing for Everton, wasn't he? Uh, but again, a self-explanatory on the younger side, but twenty one. Current ability, not enough for that age and potential, not enough. So get a bit of money for him. Uh, it was 4.1 mil. Then Lewis Gibson, I was pretty happy we got 6.5 for him, like 6.5. Not near the first team, a defender with 11 tackling and, yes, so many other attributes. Even if his tackling, say, was like his marking, 12 or if it was 13. Yeah, long throws, one of his other better technicals at Take that out of the equation if he's not taking long throws. And he just looks incredibly average. A guy that would just sit in the reserve. So I'm happy to get something. It's not substantial, but it's not like one of those. That's a few hundred K or one or two million. Six and a half's not bad. And then just below him, signed by the same team, 8.25, Anthony Gordon. I know he's gotten a bit of a go in real life for Everton, but I would have liked if he looked a bit better. At this ability, at this ability like... Two star, that's not good enough. You're at, and again at twenty two, you're not going to grow enough, especially only three star. Um, I wanted him to look a bit better. He might have a bit more of an upgrade for next season. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, but yeah, the fact he's played a bit, maybe. But for now, we have to make the best judgments. <laughs> we can't uh, be for like, oh, we can't treat him better than he is. Simple in this save, in this game. So now we just turn the dates around again so you can see them. Uh, Gibamin here, 3.5. Again, there's these are players. Are, he was more in the first team, I guess you could say. But when we were improving, yeah, definitely second fiddle. I really liked his tackling. I think that was a reason. Oh, maybe we'll keep him, train him right back. He could be versatile. But in the end, he got unhappy and just, I think he wanted a new contract and he was wanting a bit more as well. He was oh, he was definitely wanting more. Say so you can imagine anyway, if he was wanting to stay at a Premier League club, yeah. So sometimes you see a player's true ability in multiple reasons. The club they go to, the wage they're on at their new club, and then you weigh up your decision. You're like, you're happy about that. And yeah, we move on for him. And then the only other notable one was Sime Vasalko there, eleven point seven five. I was almost saying he's solid because I saw three star ability. And he's, he's in some neat attributes. He's still got 15 tackling, 14 marking, 15 crossing. But he's 31. 11 natural fitness is pretty alarming, uh, knowing his physicals are going to go down. He's, you know, pace is a part of his uh, part of his game. 15 pace, 14 acceleration. Uh, and that's going to be on the way down. I think that was a pretty good move. Because yet again, someone on a free, we've made oh, a decent profit off guys that we signed on a free transfer. Well, just didn't, this is one season worth. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. The guys we signed on a free last season. So got good money there. And it seems like it's a good move for him at the moment. So good for both parties. He's performing well there. So once more, we'll go back again uh, so we can see the order of the transfers, kind of. Kind of, anyway. Uh, all those free... Yeah, we'll go sort by the dates. Maybe one we want to see a comparison of. Adley, I want to see what his value is. Yeah, 30, 30 million plus. Just to see how that deal is looking now. So, excited for his season uh, uh, coming coming up uh, for us. He was really good uh, last uh, last season. And Smith Rowe, obviously, we know he paid 60 million. I'm happy his value is still holding around the same. As I said, I, I've touched on it before. I want to see those... 50, it, 
you, those 15s he has, if they go up one more 16, I'm ranting and raving about how good he looks. So, yeah, I want to see that. And his profile, it will just look a bit more sexy, his profile. So you've got to realise he's not that far off it. Vikandi, um, yep, I'm a Vikandi, loaned him out. Excited, well, I don't know if he'll be a superstar or not. Maybe it could be another free transfer uh, that we can get some profit off. So we'll see. Our method. Our method. I might do a video on this, but I do, sometimes I think like these things may be obvious and everyone else does it. But then I realise I'm pretty experienced at football manager. Not saying I'm the best at it or anything, but like these things are natural for me because I've done them from a long time, for a long time. But individually, searching for release clauses, relegation release clauses. So you go specific in the searching and some people might not how to find that or, or maybe it is obvious to the FM pros out there that watch the videos. But maybe to just a new player, they might not yeah, know about that. But anyway, because... Tino, I love watching him play as well. I just really like how he goes about his football. Southampton, just to show you the whole process. Yep, they're relegated. They're in the championship now. Um, they started well. I don't want to say they're on their way back because there's a lot more games to play out. And that fee for where our balance was, 26 and a half, like a, from the 25 to 30 million. I was so skeptical of signing someone. Let's not pay attention to the preseason down arrows at the moment. But he's a wonder kid, English star what Seamus Coleman just gone right back was a position we really needed as well and he's someone that's just going to settle on that position for us as our main player uh, I think you guys may agree as well right back is where maybe it was an issue for us we didn't have like, even that for Versalco who he signed on a free then we sold we just we didn't settle on someone who was really strong and I think Tino can be it he's he's exciting he's a really good attacking fullback so excited, I even clicked on him uh, before. Well, yeah, Lewis Cook was the only other one. So same reason, Lewis Cook, l look at their values, what they are now as well. Of course, always when you sign a player, their value boosts a bit, but uh, you can tell these guys had a relegation a release clause uh, in their contract. Uh, Bournemouth as well, uh, now playing in the championship, uh, starting in mid-table at the moment. Uh, but for him, like I, I have... Not everyone remembers this, but the, the journeyman I did on Twitch uh, on live streams a couple of years ago, uh, yeah, I, Bournemouth I spent a portion of time at, Lewis Cook, yeah, we had some storylines with him, but uh, yeah, it, he's a good signing for the time being for us. To put it in short for people that didn't watch and see what happened, uh, we had him yeah, at Bournemouth, uh, Arsenal showed interest, he wanted to go to a team that's playing Champions League football, and that season they didn't even make Champions League. Uh, so he was moving to a team that was not in the Champions League and we were doing so well, we qualified top four. Yeah, uh, it was a mad situation. I've always worried about this portion here. and But you've got to realize, what are these lower attributes? Corners, crossing, finishing. If he's playing deep, that doesn't even matter. Free kick taking, heading. Yeah, you can argue that's important. Long shots, long throws, marking. So a poor, some of them are important, some of them not, but you can tell he's that deep line playmaker type. He's got, again, 15, so close to 16 in those areas. So I think his value, I wouldn't pay that 30 million. What his value is at now? Um, and you probably need to play probably close to 40. Uh, what we paid, I'm happy with. That's what I basically like about relegation release clauses. You can sign players where what I like what you think their actual value is and not paying overs for the player, which is generally the case if they do not have release clauses. But let's go more deeper into our other signings now. And you can tell when the episode length is pretty long, just off talking about transfers, it kind of gives you the idea, like, yeah, how long it took to get through this because of all the, yeah, all the deals we made. But it was good nonetheless. One Miranda. We definitely needed to target a left back. We sold Mike Alenko, and we kind of got two guys that could play similar positions. But yeah, one Miranda, 17 million. Again, another case. Look at the value. We were going after bargains because we needed to. We had a bit of money, but at the same time, we needed to invest or just spend uh, in a lot of areas. Really like him. And he compared to our other one, uh, he's going to be more the left back, flair. He's going to be more, yeah, he's going to be more fullback. You can tell that off his attributes uh, than a centre back. But he can be moved over there if he's needed. 70k wage. 
Uh, he's played one game for Spain and got one goal, so that's not a bad record. Uh, he's only 23 as well, so he's going to have some gradual progression. As I said, flair. He's got those type of that those attributes that really tell. He's going to play better as a fullback. He's going to have yeah that attacking mindset. So the other similar type here for 20 million, Leonardo Balerdi from Marseille. I oh, I hate. It, it's almost uh, makes him feel like not as good when they've got arrows going down. But wait till the season proper gets started, and he might have arrows going up. He's only 24 as well, so don't expect major increases. But he's going to have steady improvement, and he's one really interesting. He's natural at centre back, then left wing back. That's like really specific. But he may have played there at his last club. Uh, he can easily be trained to play left back. Uh, we're gonna if we need him there. Uh, but he, I say he's more the centre back. He's strong on both feet, so he can deputise at right back as well. His versatility. Uh, but we were we've got a few other centre back uh, targets because uh, I think that's where we need to invest. Or we weren't lacking centre backs, but it was more so the quality of them. Even though you're not going to expect major improvements from these 23, 24 year olds, you prefer them. You know they're still they're not going to be going down anytime soon. These arrows doesn't mean he's getting worse as a player. It's just training levels. But yeah, you know he's going to be improving. And it's the signings like other players like Yeri Mina. Why we let him go? Offer try and offer a new contract. Wants like 120k. You see what I mean? You get someone who's half his price in terms of his wage. It just you know. Sometimes you have to be smart with money, especially when you're struggling. I'll manage this way normally, even generally with teams with good money. It just, this seems the logical move. I think overall, probably a better player and more a long-term player as well, being a few years younger. And I didn't want to go too heavy with the loans because we, I was almost there. We went for one with Shola from Man United. I saw some others available, but wait, this is not really rebuilding for us. But I think one... At the same time, we've got to maintain our ability and have some backup. But yeah, I don't want. To, I didn't want to go too heavy with loans. Shola and even his like. I thought, hey, you might as well. You know, in these contract offers, you can't really adjust it. You, you ask for a lower future fee, and they just reject it. And it goes back to the what they want every time. We're probably not going to spend fifty four million on this lad. Uh, so yeah, he's just going to be backup winger, can play through the middle as well. Uh, like he'll be pretty handy as that. I think he is Premier League quality. If anything, just as as a backup for us, that's how we saw him. And you know what we're paying him is nothing too excessive. You can take a look at that right there. No extra like monthly fee and a loan contract. It's not 100% of his wages, as you can see. But this signing was before we sold the Wobi by the dates. He's someone I thought we needed with yeah, Iwobi already at the team. And it's an interesting one because uh, it's just adding more depth to our wing position. We're going to see him on the right side, 31 million. It is a big transfer. But again, there's value in this guy. Like you see his attributes. Don't just look at his value. There was other players that look so similar to him and maybe a few years older, so not the same growth abilities. Someone who would have such a like such a familiar and almost looking the same, maybe a couple attributes here and there, one higher, one lower. But you might need to spend an extra 20, 20 million, 15 to 20 million on. And as I said, this guy might have a little bit extra in his like ability to grow compared to a 25, 26-year-old. Uh, really exciting, and someone who doesn't want 140 and 150k. There's again speaking from experience of guys we were looking at. Uh, I think yeah, he's very exciting. Uh, he's got some really nice player traits. Uh, really suits that right wing, especially he cuts cuts inside from the right wing. You want to play him where the player traits suit as well, uh, but you can yeah play him through the middle if we're going to utilize that. Uh, but yeah, he looks like a pretty nice winger. Again, he's got a 16 of technique, but then a few other 14s and 15s. He could be really good for us. Then Jaden Williams, who is a free transfer. I was at a point where I was looking, I was looking for free transfers. How I went about it, I was looking for position and the role I would use them in in each position because it's so hard to search individually for players that are free transfers, not running out of their contract when they've actually been released. When you're doing that in the player search, it's it's very hard. So yeah, I search by each position. I know it seems a bit of a task, but yeah, it's the best way to do it. And you search what role uh, you would play them in. And just, I thought he had pretty solid attributes for his age, 18. For me at that when he's got three-star potential, championship funnily enough we've we've had guys we released at that ability but you never know how much he's going to grow and 
you might get a little bit off him. He might turn into like one of those other guys we sell for what, like 100k, 200k, 300k. It's money. <laughs> it's better than nothing. For a guy wage, what? That's just under a K. So yeah, at the minimum, even if it would be, yeah, definitely a minimum, it would be a low kind of profit, but it's something. And then Ruben Rhodes, have to say he's from Australia, center attacking mid, uh, midfielder. Hey, there was one in the past for Everton. He was, no, he was okay. Yeah, yeah, that guy, he was okay, yeah? I don't, I don't want, not too many uh, bias there. He's from Australia, but I know some Everton fans talked about him in a, in a similar fashion. And, of course, there's one main difference to Timmy Cahill. Um, his heading is only six. Like, he, he's going to have to work a bit. But my point is, uh, he should be really, or I don't know how, again, it's another three-star potential. So maybe not on the same level, not going to be, Premier League superstar, <laughs> or at least, you know, a good player in the Premier League. You have to see. Mentally seems pretty strong. Uh, yeah, he's got a decent amount um, of those attributes uh, that I'm happy with uh, for 18-year-old. And let's go deeper on that. We were looking for a club for, to get profit, you know, uh, for, a, a, for an affiliate, affiliate club. There was a couple American clubs, a Japanese club, who generally you'd go for, and I would go for so often, but Adelaide United, as much as I hate Adelaide United, Melbourne victory over here, Melbourne Melbourne over here, we we have to hate Adelaide United. There's a real hate there. <laughs> but uh, 107K, uh, we pay them. But in Australia, football is not the biggest sport in the country to the point where it's not even known as football. Other, other codes are known as football. But the actually interest in Premier League is huge. So... I think this is a good point. Maybe not to the level in America and in Asia, but it's right up there. I'll tell you what, football fans in Australia, they'll be following a Premier League team. Maybe apart from some Italians in the country, they prefer Serie A, but generally everyone who's a football fan in the country, yeah, follows the Premier League kind of re religiously. So I'd like to think the merchandising sales uh, will have some impact. Though saying that is kind of glory hunting. Uh, the, the, the top four Premier League teams or nothing, to be fair. But a few, like growing up in high school, a few lads, they went, they, they go for Everton because of, again, Timmy K, he'll play for them. He had that kind of impact. Some people chose to support Everton over a top four, um, yeah, top four club, uh, glory hunting club because of one player. But then uh, we'll go through the next few here. Charlie Crespo from Leeds United with our last signing or a couple of these signings here wanted to add a bit extra depth to the defense. And he was a bit more on the other side. He's 21, so he may not play every single game. He's got some improvement. Like, I'm still... Like, some guys like him, I've said, okay, they're 21, 22. They may not increase massively. I'm hoping he does have that level of star to grow into. Because, yeah, those technicals... Like, for me, as a starting centre-back, those need to be at least 14. Like, heading, marking, and tackling. That's kind of my rate, you know? Um, because then his mentals and physicals look acceptable. So, I really hope he does develop. He's only on 16K. I was happy with the amount we signed him for. You can see right now he's wanted. And ugh, I don't even want to go through players that rejected us as well. But then there's the other side of things. He was one, and a few of these other signings we made that were interested by other clubs and chose us. So... I do have hopes for him, but yeah, those defensive technicals, those three, I, I hope to see them develop. And then I went with someone who I think is a bargain, and again, another one from Bournemouth. I don't think he had a release clause, though, Chris Meppen. Like, I, I think he was just wanting to leave, <laughs> he wanted to go back to the Premier League. So the thing is interesting for him, uh, previously, he helped them get promoted. He had a good season in the Championship. And then he played more regular in the Premier League. He, he could have had injury troubles in that season, or who knows. But for a team that got relegated, a 6.87 is not terrible. Sometimes you see defenders are 6.6, 6.7. So I think he had a good season, and we get him at a good value, as you can just see. Once more, you could say definitely we have depth in the center halves. And I talked about how we did journeyman a couple years ago in Mepham. Like he ended up, his marking, I kind of remember that. The marking and ta I remember those turning into 16. So I hope that happens again, because I, I talk about players with those 15 attribute, um, yeah, the attributes of 15 that turn into 16, and they suddenly look like stars. He's 25, so I wouldn't say he's old, uh, so I'm not going to put it as an expectation to go up, but 
I wouldn't say it's like impossible. There's a real chance for that. And even if they don't, he's so close to being that ability. There's no reason why, yeah, he can't perform at a good level. And he is an international for Wales. So he's going to have that yeah, international experience. Good one to add to the side. And then finally, so you could really line up the dates here. Jovic was to replace Iwobi to save money. Even though I'm happy with our balance, we off last season, we know it's probably going to be heading downwards. We're not in Europe this season. We're not in Champions League. So there's that money out of the equation. But 4.8, he was, again, foreign release clause. He's that type, that Serbian from Partizan, 4.8 million. And he was a wonder kid, but he turned 21, must have recently. Yeah, 8th or the 8th, August. He he was literally, he said wonder kid. So he has got that potential in him. I mean, if you just judge off that. But yeah, he's seen as a wonder kid. You know what vibes he gives me? Andrea Zivkovic. Don't tell me. he Don't tell me he doesn't give you Andrea Zivkovic vibes. He came from Partisan, like FM12, FM13, FM14. Don't tell me he's not... And again, an FM13, FM14, Andrea Zivkovic. He is. He is. And it, it it gives you that feel. I don't know if you've had uh, similar players like that in the past. They remind you of a player. But what? Same country. Same club. Similar kind of value. You could sign him for cheap as well. Similar potential. And attributes will be so... No, no he's not going to be to the number. Not exactly the same attribute-wise. Strong on both feet. But... Mate, like there's there is familiarities there, and it gets you a bit excited, doesn't he? Give you back that yeah, it's a throwback feeling. I'm not sure if anyone else relates anyway, but for that look at <laughs> look at that value. If he doesn't, the only thing he wanted important player. I tried to even one step below. He didn't want he didn't even want to be like like a squad player. No, because I'm like, I mean, there's going to be players ahead of you, not too far ahead, mind you. He's three and a half star, so. We'll see. We'll see how he goes. It's good that he's strong on both feet. Maybe yeah, train him that right side as well. So yeah, he he can be good on both sides, like he is good on both feet. But yeah, for a couple of reasons. For a couple of reasons, money is one of them. So without seeing the recording time, I know this is probably going to be close to around thirty minutes recording time, just talking on my players, and probably one of the most in depth ones I've done for a while. But like I said near the start that really, like, it tells the time I spent in this preseason. So, yeah, it's quite accurate. And we were just talking about all the sightings we made uh, in and out. So, yeah, all all important details. But we did just want to talk a little bit on the money situation. You're like, you could have spent a bit more, and it's similar to previous season as well. $40 million and could put more into that with our wage budget. But um, this is going to go down. This this overall balance, don't, because we're going to, it's going to be so much off of, like, uh, like signings, money we spent. So leave it to the next month and we'll report, you know, when we continue to January uh, in in the rebuild, uh, how we go about it and, yeah, see how the finances look. Uh, and I think with our wages spent, I think last season I committed or currently spending um, right now, that's the same. I think it was about $1.8 So it's only a little bit less that we're paying. So... I don't know if we're going to see much of a difference. And as I said, we're not in Champions League this season. So my feeling is our overall balance is going to be heading uh, downwards. That's why I want something, yeah, to be sitting comfortable there. And I'll just show you the captaincy here. Uh, we went with Pickford uh, to take the captaincy, Ben Godfrey as the vice captain. But just this is more showing the signings. Lewis Cook, Mepham, uh, Livermento. Maybe he could be a future captain because he's so young, but... Definitely the signings of Cook and Mepham. That brings in some experience. Guys that are not too old, though, but they've got, yeah, leadership and teamwork abilities, which, yeah, is that's really huge. And two guys that add different, um, like, parts of the pitch. Uh, one as a midfielder, like center mid, and then one at the back, uh, center back. So those are really, really good signings in the technical and mental side of the game. But after the big build-up, and, of course, an important build-up to all those signings. Let's get start. And a part of me was glad Sheffield United. I feel we have a chance. They finished 16th in the league last season. We have a chance to, like, win. <laughs> we have a chance to win this game. It's not one of the top clubs. Next minute, watch me lose it. But 
Don't be too surprised. We're taking a little bit of a different approach. You would have seen we had two tactics um, always there, but we were so heavy on the 4-2-4, which we had a couple great seasons, right? But the 4-3-3, and initially we didn't, we weren't utilizing a false nine, but I was just weighing up how we're going to utilize the team and what's going to get the best results for us. And I think the 4-2-4 is something we can go to in-game when we need goals. So I think starting with the 4-3-3 and as we improve the quality, getting now we're adding more technical quality. Previously, it was signings like Smith Rowe and Adley. And I thought, okay, was that enough? Not sure. Now I just think we have a lot more technical quality in Dali Ali to play that false nine and I think if we wrote you, because also now um, we we only have th really three strikers. We got Dali Ali, Richarlison, and Larin. Larin, I still have my thoughts about, and he's more maybe a target. When we use him, we might use him target forward or pressing, uh, maybe stepping away from the advanced forward poacher types. But yeah, he's he, he was good last season. He scored more goals than I maybe expected of him. Uh, looking at his attributes. Uh, so I really think um, it's Dali Ali and Richarlison. You might be like, you want them both on the pitch. Of course, as the season goes on, uh, going to rotate. Like Edwards as well. That's We've got extra versatility now. If you think you've got Richarlison, Edwards to come off the bench. That's looking really, really good. And we had to make a decision here. Yeah, Mepham. We're going to start him because we just talked about him as well. Uh, but Belurdi makes the bench ahead of Keane. He's heading... See? We're kind of getting to a point where Keane is not pushing out of the team, but not being the regular. Not even starting, or not even on the bench. And this is where we probably bring Larry in as well for, yeah, Branthwaite. You might say you don't have a backup for right back. Sometimes, yeah, so we do have our money really in mind. We have it in mind a lot. But my thought is Godfrey can be really versatile, even for another DM. Like, we're going to probably have Alan and then uh, maybe Cook will rotate. Oh, we want one other player. And generally, yep, yeah, Jan and Villa. I just want <laughs> so much I want to talk about. Free transfer. He decided to join Nice. Like, sure. Uh, I, I really wanted him to pick us. He would have capped that off. Just another DM. Yeah, just another DM in the team. But, yeah, he, Decide to join another team, what can we do? So it is in my mind another right back if you wanted a natural. But yeah, Godfrey can play there. And if we wanted to get games into Branthwaite as well. So it's something in my mind we may address. Sometimes you need to see your tactical setup like this. And um, yeah, that's probably the only position. Maybe DM slightly, one more. But I am very mindful of us losing money month on month. So, yeah, just have to weigh it up. You're like, yeah, you definitely, you got budget there. On paper, looks like, yeah, why don't you use that? It's kind of the fear of what we've seen in the last couple of seasons with our money and not having that Champions League money this time around. So we're probably going to look somewhere on the cheaper side. Though, but we just say Belurdi, train him right back. Tr like, he's strong on his, he's very strong on his right foot. Just train him there and get accomplished there. So his versatility, and generally when they've got versatility already, they're so easy to train. They can really learn that. So, yeah, that's that's really uh, the perk for us, uh, that he's a versatile player. And he even could have been trained to DM as well. So maybe he could just be that, yeah, fill-in man. But yeah, you can tell this is a more shorter passing, trying to dominate the game. And look at all the individual individual names. Dali Ali, Vieira, Smith Rowe, Cook, Adley. They're... Yeah, they're creative. They're they're types that will suit a possession game. And then the fullbacks of Miranda and Liveramento, having them push up. It's I'm excited. So let's see how we go. Oh, of course, we can. Yeah, we can add a couple more on the bench. We can get Branthwaite there anyway, and Keane just because he's a bit more experienced than Cresswell. So nah, I'm really happy with that squad size. Of course, we've got a couple of youth players with potential as well that we could upgrade. So yeah, as I said, we could be safe. We could. We could utilize uh, the training with Belurdi and maybe a couple other players, uh, that have versatility as well. Uh, yeah, and we might not need to uh, sign someone else and we can settle on what I've been wanting. <laughs> yeah, to save our money. Nemanja Jovic, the only one we haven't given a number to. I'm going to give him a cheeky 17. Leave that 13 out. Yeah, let's go. But yeah, when we have a preseason like that, when we've spent a lot, a lot of time on the transfers... And again, like I said, the length of the video really showcases that. 
I'm I'm really excited where the team is at. And also the fact I'm going to have fun really playing the rest of this season or playing this season. Um, yeah, I just uh, – and sometimes it takes that two or three seasons and your team's looking – you've got – multiple signings that you like, not just one or two. Like, okay, just from the starting 11, who's new? Livramento, Mepham, Miranda, Adley, Cook, Verrera, Smith-Rowe, and, of course, Dali Ali was signed in real life, then a few on the bench as well, a regen youth intake, goalkeeper, that's beastly. Like, there's so much to talk about. Go out there and impress me. And then we're just going to go through, yeah, make me proud. Like, that's what they gain. Isn't that like such a, like a like the same thing to say? <laughs> like, yeah, make me proud. I have faith in you. But I have to say that again. And a few get motivate, motivated uh, on, in the defensive half, which is not too bad. All right. We like it. And Sheffield United, okay, they're just playing, you know, straight forward, a straight bat, 4-4-2. And then us, we're going to be looking to play a dominating style. And again, I think we do have the personnel for it. And we took, oh yeah, something I did want to say as well, just tactically, if DM, we don't have someone, if this possession game is really working for us, if for whatever reason, Alan is just not up for it or we need to rest him, we've got, see, Ferreira, Smith Rowe can all play a center mid. We could set up, we can go into a match with Adley Cook and then Ferreira and Rowe as three center mids and that looks exciting so yeah especially if we want to be really creative and something we could even change to during games because then again Richarlison can play out on the left Laren says he can but don't really like that uh Shola so we have got that versatility and Nemanja Jovic as well so that's an alternate option that I am excited about as well so we've got versatility all right Cook Oh, don't tell me we'll start with a bang. Or it will be really exciting. Cook. It's going to be a free kick. Is someone going to step up with a banger? Could someone say... Who's it going to be? FM getting my hopes up, man. Something the game loves to do. But, yeah. I expect us to really, really take hold of games. And one thing we didn't do. Pre-season review. That's what the look preseason looked like. And again, we were doing it in America. That's why there was the American clubs. And all the other friendlies, were, we, we drew against Rangers. There was, I thought, oh, we came back, we played Rangers, couldn't beat them. Uh, uh, Car again, Carrick Rangers. I wanted to get revenge against a team called Rangers. An easy game there before it got started. You might say there wasn't a team that was a real challenge. And Rangers, we couldn't even beat. But of course, preseason, you're rotating a whole lot, I think. It was a good preseason for getting the morale up. Godfrey just eased off tackles there really early to get a yellow. Livramento to Adley. This this is exact. Is that going to be offside? I won't be too mad if it is, but if it's not, yeah, we take a goal. But I'm I'm so happy with that play more than anything. But let's see what good old VAR thinks. It's goal disallowed. See how I felt about that. Yeah, generally I felt it was going to be given. Why does it say first goal of the season? It was taken away. He was... Do I be happy with it if he's clearly offside? I'm not sure. But I like the build-up play. <laughs> Can I take that? And again, just see how we build up out of the back as well. Cook to Alan. And Miranda, again, I said how I really like his attacking fullback ability. Dali Ali has the false nine. We're going to bring in the midfield. And as soon as I say that, we gave away possession so easily. And I don't want to be hurt. I don't want to be hurt on the counter, which might be might be a what? Godfrey. He's good. Dali. Oh, good that he didn't lose it. Smith Rowe. I want to see him step up that next level this season. Miranda. Uh, fullbacks are going to be massive. Cook. Alan. To Dali Ali. Build. Pass, pass, pass. And it's a beautiful goal. Watch out. Watch out for Adley. It's going to be another one. I don't like... I don't like getting all these offside calls. Hopefully this one's given. It seemed legit. Yes. It's, when it goes like this, it's generally... When it says goal review and the replay's already started, it, it looks like it generally is offside. Uh, onside. You know what um, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's generally gonna be on. It's gonna be a, a legit goal. Like how it's presented to you. 
And you, I felt like he was clear. Like, I don't... I don't think that should have been reviewed. I thought that should have been seen. But I know every goal is reviewed, but not every goal has to be called VAR. And again, Adley, you know, just to review him once more, got him at a great deal. 7.75. He wasn't one of our free transfers, but compared to his value, that was a really good deal. Just like Aldi prices. But his quality is actually good. And I like how we're going about it. Again, we've got that 60% possession right now. So it gives us a different approach. It really does to how we are going last season. And maybe more responsible as well. Okay, now see what the defense does. Because this is like math. I feel against better teams, like those kind of chances. Again, it's early in the season, but I feel quality is going to be punished there. Or quality will be punishing in that those kind of situations. But anyway, 1-0, point finger. Sometimes at 1-0, I'll say don't get complacent. But I'm happy with how we're controlling the game. So we'll say that. And yeah, brilliant reaction. I like how we're executing what we're wanting. The players, yeah, it's really good. It suits our players, as I said, with all the technical quality we've got. But the problem is still errors being made. So, does it suit us as much? I say we have technical quality. Uh, we're giving away possession. Not exactly. That's that's not in our tactical plans. And Godfrey deals with it. Right, 1-0. Wondering about, wonder about subs. Smith or Amate, why are you playing... Even last season, we, review, we know what he looks like as a player. Four-star ability. Let's not judge him off the first game of this season. And let's give, because I'm so excited. I could bring on someone else. Like, really, you could bring on Richarlison. But I want to bring on Jovic. I'm so excited for him. Like, he's younger. He's younger, younger. He's, I mean, not too young. He's still 21, but I feel he's got a lot of upside uh, too. He's just, he's, he's just graduated from being described as a wonder kid. So, I just... Smith Rowe, your position on left wing, anyway, could be in jeopardy if Jovic... Mate, he could be he could be a star. One nil, okay. Ooh. Edwards for Vieira has been okay, but not spectacular. And then a center mid. See, this is where rotations. That's where you could say even one more center mid you could be on the weaker side of. Like we one more could do. If we can find someone, that wage is not too much. But yeah, here, Lewis Cook. See, Scholl, look at the type. This is, nah, nah, this is where you bring on, nah, Richarlison. And then you switch with Dali Ali, and that kind of backs up what I've said. So you could say he's better advanced forward, but I think he's still solid attributes, Richarlison, to suit that, that one that drops a bit more, false nine role. I was going to say, let me know if you think we do need that extra one midfield player. But at the same time, that's me saying, do we really need to do that? But right now, we don't have injuries. And injury strikes. And yeah, it's good to have that backup. Or even now, I said, I said loans. I didn't want to go for too many because it's a rebuild. But right now, it's more so we're looking for backup in the squad. It de all depends on the quality that's available. But yeah, right now, we're looking for backup. Not necessarily signing someone to be part of the rebuild because those players are, yeah, the ones we've got in the squad already. 1 0, does that strike you with a bit of a concern? Or the, especially as the game's not even over yet, we could easily concede late. And these results are so big. Not losing against one of the big clubs. This is where we need to make sure we secure three. We need to secure three, don't concede late. Save. Yes. But this is where it is crucial. Or could it even be for a highlight on our side? In the end. Make it two so we don't worry. Jovic. Ooh. Was hoping he'd do something special. <gasps> Miranda. Oh, Miranda. That was amazing. It could have led to a goal. Like, what he exactly did there, was it a goal or not? Like, it doesn't matter. That end, It could have been. That play was really, really nice. How good was Mepham? And he didn't get involved with the goal, did he? I'm like, please don't. <laughs> he had two key tackles, three key headers. Yeah, so he wasn't... No, he didn't get in... The, he wasn't part of the assist. 
huge. I tell you what, he's mm, he. I like his signing and the price we got him for, man. Someone who's a similar ability might have cost twenty more million, like around thirty million or so. Find these bargain signings. Miranda for most key passes, so I'm right to be getting excited about him. He's now. If we came top four season one, we we have to with this team now because we're so so confident. And it might just because we we had a clean sheet. That's why the defensive side had good ratings. But the defensive play was really really good. I was really happy with it and how that's set up. And I expect us to be more, yeah, more, I say more defensive this season, but better defensively. They had chances, but their chances must not have been that good. Just saying, um, yeah, I think we'll be set up well defensively. Yeah, opponents may get shots, but how good are those shots? It's something I guess you analyze a bit more. Their XG was only a little higher. So, yeah, first game of the season, solid, out, uh, solid performance by us. Yeah, solid output. And I did say, it against a bigger team, it may have been tricky. So I have to say there was definite signs here today. And what we saw here today is not going to be our best game one of the season for multiple reasons. This tactic needs a bit more learning and players that are new to the club, they got they got gelling time. They need time to gel. So that's going to come. Some players didn't look... Some, some players felt right at home. Miranda in that attacking fullback role looked right at home, without a doubt. That He's someone that's going to be a really good player going forward for us. I don't mean going forward attacking, but I mean just in the future, if, he, if he's done that on match one. And Chris Mepham as well, experienced around this level. Again, experienced without being too old. I love that about a player where, yeah, they're nowhere near going down. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy with what the signings have added to the squad for the season. Looking good. Obviously, it was a tricky game for Chelsea. <laughs> so it's interesting saying that, yeah, Two big clubs, Man City, just really did them though, 4-0, as you can see. There we go, we'll just see our four messages and we'll round things up. Uh, we know it's been a big episode. Chris Meppham, brilliant, 32 headers won, 86%, it's pretty good from all those attempts, handshake, amazing defensive work. Just to round up on him as well, again, the goal scorers could get the plaudits, but for a three-star, what he's seen three-star, yeah, for someone you what you outlay twelve and a half million bargain man, bargain again. It's really interesting. That's one game, so I don't want to say it too early. But someone who can put those levels of performances in, where do you kind of, where do you kind of put that? Where do you put that in a comparison to a goal scorer? Twenty goals, twenty five, thirty for the whole season. It's hard to really compare. You just say, yeah, he's going to be good on his defensive side. There's not going to be maybe a number to compare that to. So, yeah, everything we said opinion-wise already got it in the video, definitely. Uh, yeah, 30 million on that overall balance. We're still wary of how... My thing is we signed another player and I'm like, oh, our spending's probably going to be the same as last season. So, yeah, yeah, I just wonder about that. I just thought, uh, and, yeah, the fact we're not in Champions League anyway, maybe just a similar yeah loss we're going to take, maybe a few million each month. We're going to have to see uh, when we get into the season proper, when, yeah, finances not impacted by transfers. Uh, we're going to see. Let me know where you think the squad is um, and that versus that that, that kind of uh, conversation, where the squad is if we need another signing or not. And, yeah, is it, could that closer yeah push us into making a negative? Because uh, the argument could be said you even sign another couple players. But anyway, we're going to leave it there for now. Leave your thoughts and I'll see you guys next time.